What's up with that? Hello. There we go. Hi. How you doing? What's going on? Welcome to the replay. Welcome to Daily Fuel. My name is Bobby. I am the host of this group. And Richard Beatty is the first commenter today with click. Click. That's a word. And Ray is here. And Kelly is here. Hello, Kelly. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Kelly. And Brandy is here. Hi, Brandy. How are you? And, uh, uh, cool. So, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Enough of you people. I'm going to say hi to the replay people for a moment. Hello, replay people. Let me know that you're here in the replay. And, uh, you know, I like to know that people watch it even after the live. So if you can, just let me know that you're here. You can write a comment. You can put a hashtag, hashtag replay, hashtag I missed it, hashtag I missed it, and I am so sad, and now I am stuck in the replay. It's okay. We still love replay people, right? Right, guys? Okay, enough of them. Uh, live people, how you doing? Let us, uh, I got another 30 seconds or so. So yeah, if you're new to the group and you're new to Daily Fuel, here's how this works. I'm going to ignore all the comments and I'm going to do my spiel and I'm going to talk for a minute. And then when I'm done with what I have to say, I'm going to come back to the comments and I'm going to read them. And, uh, and that's my favorite part because we get into really good discussions there. So feel free to be commenting the whole time that I'm talking because it makes a clicky sound that I like and it makes me know that there are still people there because I'm not looking at my screen usually when I'm talking. And, uh, and I, I don't even know that <laughs> if you're there. There was one time I was talking and talking and talking and, uh, and I looked down, I glanced down and the thing had stopped. And I was talking for minutes, uh, and, and, and it wasn't going live anymore. There was a glitch with Facebook a couple weeks ago. All right, we're about two minutes, so let's get started. Uh, you click at the start to synchronize. You click at the start to synchronize. What does that mean? And Robin says, hi, with flowers. Let's get going. <sighs> Pricing your art. How do you make money with art? You know, here's the thing about making money with art, right? Uh, it's drilled into our heads probably since we were little kids. Oh, you're such a good artist, but when you grow up, you'll be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. And because they make money and artists don't make money, you can't make money as an artist. Uh, silly you know so it's like it's it's kind of like whether you literally had an adult telling you that as a kid it, it's almost irrelevant because society tells us that and it is just ingrained into everything that, that uh, you know there are just certain things that you don't do it, it, if you you want to be stable and have a life with money uh you don't be an artist is what they say i call bullshit on all of that i think we can make lots of money as artists uh we just need to overcome that programming that that head trash i like to call it head trash what is head trash it's crap that we put in our heads and have believed for years decades maybe and uh and and it's garbage it is just garbage we should put it in a bag tie it up throw it out the window be done with it let the garbage men take it and throw it to the trash dump gone it should not be in our heads so uh let's get rid of some of that head trash shall we now Alyssa? i don't know if Alyssa and dania are here yet or will be or whatever but uh, Alyssa yesterday, in yesterday's live, made a comment about how uh, she's having a hard time pricing her art. Sometimes she feels like she's pricing it too low. Sometimes she feels like she's pricing it too high. And she gets in this back and forth in her head about that. And then the next thing you know, she ends up doing nothing. And Dania made a similar comment today on my teaser post for this for this live that uh, you know she does she has a hard time pricing. She says some some people want cheap. And some people will pay more and say she should jack up her prices. So she's like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. So let's talk about this for a little bit and uh, and just understand what, what's happening with all of that. So we've been skirting around this issue. I've been touching upon it in the last couple of weeks. And today I just wanted to take everything that I've been saying and really kind of gel it together. And yesterday when I answered Alyssa's comment, I felt like I didn't land it the way that I really wanted to, which is why I wanted to do it again, uh, having some thought behind it. Um, okay, so here's something that I've said before. If we One way to think about pricing your art is to realize that art 
is art. It is unique. It is not a commodity. Okay, so let's take the painters and the sculptors and the things like that, right? Not the people who get, uh, you know, I'm not talking about if you get, you know, you're a dancer and you get hired to be in a show or something like that. That's There's going to be rates involved with that. You're not walking in, uh, you know, a first year dancer saying like, I make a million dollars an hour. They're going to tell you, you know, fuck off and <laughs> hire somebody else. Um, so, you, the, but the mindset is the same, that art is unique and anything that you create and it's tangible and you can show to people is absolutely unique and is not a commodity a commodity being something like you know food at the uh, at the grocery store or gasoline gasoline is a commodity it's the 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 uh the the price of gasoline is set by the market and set by you know supply and demand and all that stuff and the that thing was hacked and that's why now prices are going up because of what you know whatever it's not it's outside of our thing nobody's going to be like wow that was great gasoline i would pay a million dollars for that gasoline no it, you put it in your car and your car goes who cares right but art is unique. The people who buy art, they're they're not buying a thing. It's not like, oh, that's a canvas with some colors on it. That would look good on my wall because my walls are white and I don't like white walls. And instead of painting my walls, I'll just put that thing on there because it already has colors on it. No, nobody thinks that way. They're like, that's cool. I like that. I don't like that. People have a feeling about art. It makes them feel things. So the people who buy art are, they're, they're, they're trying to get a feeling. They're trying to be in on something. They're trying to, uh, they're, they're, they see it as an investment. So we get to pick. We get to pick how much we want to charge. Now, Richard's here today. Richard, you commented something the other day. I hope you're still here. Uh, that uh, you have a P... Richard, by the way, if you don't know, Richard Beatty. He's a tattoo artist, among many other things. And he he uh, has created these really cool um, tattoo... What, what do you call those? Tattoo guns? I don't know what they're called. Anyway, they're things that the tattoo guys hold to... Right? And uh, except his are works of art in and of themselves. And... Uh, so he's got one that he has on sale for like $10,000 and n nobody is paying that for it, but he's refusing to budge because it's his thing and he knows like, I'm not parting with this for less than that. I'm not selling it to just any Joe Schmo for, you know, five grand or two grand or whatever. But because so many people are enamored by it, that it be it creates such a it creates conversations in his in his world. It creates uh, people are just like intrigued by him. And he has two thousand uh, dollar tattoo thingamajigs, and he sells them. And they're like, well, I'll take that one, even though I can't afford that one. And he's making sales left and right on these $2,000 machines because he made one for $10,000. And he's like, you want this? Oh, you can't afford that? Well, I got this. And they go, oh, I want that. Right? But what do we do? What do a lot of us, by the way, Richard, good for you on that. Uh, but what do a lot of us do? A lot of us are like, oh, well, I, yeah, I can make paintings, but a lot of people can make paintings. I know a lot of artists. I'm in this one group with like almost a thousand people in it. And they all can paint better than me. And we think it's not really worth much, but nothing that you make can be created by anyone else. Nothing that you make, nothing that you make can be created by anybody else. Nothing. So if somebody wants it, how much is it worth to them? That's the thing. It's not a commodity. It's not set by the market. It's how much is this thing worth to you? And Ray uh, mentioned that people are asking her for portraits. Uh, or And so it's like, well, if you're making a portrait, the interesting thing about a portrait is that uh, if I want a portrait, I want it to be of me, <laughs> you know? So I'm not going to go and buy a portrait of somebody else, maybe of my kids or whatever, but it's, it's, so you have to, the, you have to find the people that are willing to pay for their portrait, the amount of money that you want to make for some people they don't care they just they, they they don't see the difference between a professional portrait and a caricature at the amusement park that they paid five bucks for why would i pay you a thousand dollars for my portrait when i could get this cool caricature for five bucks if they don't see the difference and you don't want to sell your work for five bucks then you're in front of the wrong people that's just it well i'm skipping ahead so 
Now, let's talk for a moment about what if your piece is considered a commodity. And in uh, Alyssa's uh, case, uh, and, and many of you, and Dania as well, um, they make they they do they do the wire wrapping. They make this really cool jewelry, and so sometimes they'll sell. And Barbara, I don't know if Barbara's here today. Uh, so a lot of times, people who make things like that might bring them to say a farmer's market. I think Barbara's going to one this weekend, and they'll bring it to a farmer's market where there's other people selling similar things. Now, in that sen in that case, what happens is if you're putting yourself in that place where you're setting up a table and here's my stuff, and this other person has a table with their stuff, and so does this guy, right? And all the stuff is cool, but you know, I really I'm a lay person and I don't know the difference between this stuff and this stuff. What do I have to go on? I have to price. That's it. Your stuff is twenty dollars and theirs is four dollars. Why would I pay twenty dollars? I don't understand. You know, now you may understand, oh well, I use this material and that material, but none of that is the reason. None of that is the reason. The reason you charge more is because you don't sell the commodity, you sell yourself. Now it might be hard to do cold at a farmer's market, so that's not if, if that's where you're selling uh, and you're meeting people there for the first time, this is going to be a little difficult. But if you can sort of create a where you become the brand, you personally become the product. You're watching me do it. What the heck is going on here in this group? Who, who am I? Did you know me before you joined this group? Most of you did not. However, for a lot of you, I'm selling myself. I'm selling you on me. You're buying into me. And that's what I'm trying to create here so that if I were to create something that was a commodity, even if it were a commodity, you would still know that, well, it's coming from Bobby. You know, so I, I want that. Think of like Air Jordan sneakers compared to other sneakers. Do people still wear Air Jordans? I have no idea. Anyway, th that one was like huge when they came out, right? So, um, but why? Why do some people like this sneaker more than this sneaker? It's leather on rubber and you walk in them. Who cares? Well, that's my feeling about it. But some people are like, oh no, look at this sneaker. I pay 10 grand for this sneaker. 10, how, I try to get my sneakers for 40 bucks at Payless. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, to me, that's the difference. Uh, but, but for some people, it's this thing and it's got this person's name on it. Why? Because they're buying into the story. They're buying into the brand. They're buying into the, 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 the membership mentality of like, wow, now I'm part of this community. It, when I have these on, it's showing the world who I am. I'm part of this thing. That's what they're paying for. But if you're just sitting up a table at a farmer's market, not that there's anything wrong with that, but if that's all you're doing and you wish that you could sell your things for a thousand bucks, but you can't get more than five bucks because everyone else is selling them for five bucks, then you're, you're going about it wrong. There's no way to create the story of you there. But imagine if you were doing that online, say in a Facebook group, and you were creating the story of you there, and you alerted your, your people that, by the way, I'm gonna be at this farmer's market, and this farmer's market, and this farmer's market, come meet me in person, and they got in their cars and they drove there, they wouldn't even look at anyone's table. They wouldn't even think that, oh my God, this guy's crap and this guy's crap. Your stuff is beautiful. And meanwhile, the people who don't know you are walking around going like, I don't see a difference. What's the difference? <laughs> so that's, you have to create a, 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 a community around yourself. You are the artist, you are the art. The thing you make is the thing you make. And they buy that because they can't buy you. Uh, so, you know, you need to have a story around yourself. And then finally, the third one is, I've been saying it the whole time, if the people don't like your stuff or the people won't pay what you want to pay, then you're just in front of the wrong people. You have to figure out how to put yourself in front of the right people. If you're trying to get the wrong people to pay more money, they just won't. They just won't do it. It's not fair to them to insist it because they'll just get annoyed with you. But if you pivot and turn to find the correct people who are into that, then uh, they'll appreciate it and they'll, they'll follow you anywhere. So guys, those are my three things for today. I hope that helped a little bit. 
Um, the, 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 the worst thing you can do though, as, uh, Dania and Alyssa were saying is to do nothing. Start anywhere. If you just don't know, just guess, you have to guess. And if it's too high or too low, then figure out how do I make it higher? Maybe, maybe nobody knows me as the artist. How do I get more of a name in this field? You know, or if, uh, if you're asking too much, then, you know, then, uh, then, you just, you, it's just a matter of finding the right people, finding your story, and figuring out how to put them together. Because when you do that, they'll pay anything. They'll pay absolutely anything that you ask. If the right people love your story and you say, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's $10,000, they'll pay it. And then you don't need a million people. You need like one this day and one that day, and right? You, you need fewer people. So I keep, uh, wow, that was a lot. Let's see what we, well, holy cow, this is a lot of comments. Okay. Ah, let's go. Comment time. Click. Hi. Bye, Bobby. Brandy, you said hi. Richard, you click at the start. Okay, I've, I just read all these. Head trash. Great way to put it. Uh, thanks. I didn't make that up. That was from my old sales training. They called it head trash. Head trash sounds like a great band name. <laughs> it does sound like a great, uh, probably already is one. Nah, you can start a new one. Uh, Rupert, I changed the pricing for what I do a few days ago. Well, cool, man. How does that work? Sometimes, by the way, pricing requires some give and take, or not give and take, I'm sorry. Pricing requires some, uh, Trial and error. You can, you can try things out and see how it floats and then, and then scale it back a little bit. Also, something that I really I didn't touch upon and I meant to, but I forgot to write it down, is it has to be okay in your head too. It's it's not that you could just go out and say, you know, I want I want I want ten thousand dollars for this. If you don't have the mindset that it's worth ten thousand dollars, if you don't believe it's worth it, if you don't believe in your own story, then nobody else will. So you have to build it up in yourself first, and then you will exude it. Uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I was not able to get up on daily lives and blah, 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 do this crap. I wasn't able to do that. I didn't have the, the confidence level and the mentality and the, uh, and the belief in myself that I, that, you know what? No, I can get up and I can do these lives every single day, except Sunday, in front of these people. I can do that. I believe that now, and so I do. But I used to not believe it, and so I did not. Um, so if you need to start where your belief uh, system is, if your belief system is here, there's nothing wrong with wherever here is. You can build your belief system up over time. Uh, Kelly, I agree with you. Great name. Brandy says, that is so true. Right? Thank you. I don't know what I said. Since I was little, I was always writing poems and I loved it, but I chose to go into the medical field because of money due to hearing that. Oh, oh, you were saying that uh, you can't make you can't make money in art, right? Uh, I wish I would have stuck with my passion. Well, it's never too late. Are you breathing? If yes, then you can continue doing it. If no, then uh, come back and do it again. Uh, Mac says, second live I caught. Hurrah. Hey, Muddy. Uh, Muddy. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Uh, nice to see you. Well, I don't see your face for some reason, but I, but you, uh, you're you here. Uh, Richard, uh, LOL, you click your fingers at the start. That. Uh, pricing is psychological. Yeah, that's it, man. Pricing is psychological. And I, and I mentioned something the other day that uh, sometimes it was hard for me to price certain services. Uh, I would do client services for B2B clients, website design, logo design. And sometimes it was hard for me to ask for certain numbers because I personally could not afford that number that day. You know, like, how can I ask them for $6,000 for this project? I don't even have $6,000 in the bank right now. You know, I, I could not write this check to myself myself. You know what I mean? So it would be like a mind screw up because I couldn't uh, I couldn't even rationalize to myself, how if I can't afford this today, how could anybody afford this? It's crazy. It's psychological. That's a really great way to say it, Richard. Thanks, buddy. Adonis here. Hi, I'm late. Can you start again? Yes. Pricing your... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> How far will he go with that joke? I, I don't know. I could have gone a little while, but I won't. Uh, you can still become a poet. Yes, absolutely you can. I really, I'm not... A pro uh, the same thing uh, here uh, who that was brandy right all right so what's the one thing we learned uh you can't make money as an artist right what's the other thing that society tells us all the time 
you missed your boat. It's too late. You, you should have done that when you were 20, right? Now you're not 20, so you can't do anything anymore. What? Who made up these rules? I don't know, but, uh, but I do not subscribe to them. So good for you, Rupert and uh, Brandy. Definitely uh, be a poet. Uh, your poems were wonderful. I enjoyed them. Thank you. Crimson, I started selling low, and each time I take new art to the gallery, I have raised my prices. I'm still trying to figure out my market. That's fine. It's not an overnight thing. It's not like I I am Banksy. That's it. Nine million bucks. That's what it costs. You probably don't have the mindset psychologically, as Richard said, to just come right out with these ridiculous numbers, you know? Uh, so you have to build up to it and build up to it and build up to it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing so. Uh, just let's not get let ourselves get stagnant. If you know, like, man, I should really be here, but right now I'm here. I'm here literally. This is where people are paying. And I can psychologically see myself charging this, but I, mean, I can't even see myself charging this. Well, don't jump to here. Go like this. Do this over time. Because once you're here for a little while, once you're here for a little while, then suddenly here doesn't seem like a big leap anymore. But when you're here, here seems like a big leap until all of a sudden you're here and now, boom, you're there. And now here seems silly. It's like, this is all I'm getting, right? It just, you just keep going up and up and up. Did you understand that? It made perfect sense to me. Um, Robin says, <laughs> oh, sometimes I crack myself up. Uh, art is unique and not a commodity. Great concept, a good thing to remember. Thank you for your quotes, Robin. Robin is very helpful. You put my quotes in quotes so that I know you're not saying things because then I would be like, did I say that? Or, wow, that's smart. And meanwhile, I said it and I feel stupid for saying that I'm so smart, which... Mac, uh, fractalism art is fascinating to me. Fractalism art? What is that? I don't know what that is. That's really fractalism art is fascinating to me. Is that, did I say that? I don't even know what that is. Uh, is that like with fractals? Uh, because fractals are really cool. I'm, I'm into that. Is that what you're talking about? Tell me. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. Barbara. Okay. Not a commodity, yes. And Barbara, your your art is a perfect example, right? Because it's not it's not. Oh look, uh, mass market uh, things that I made. It's not. It's I. Barbara made this. Barbara, do you know Barbara? Barbara made this. I got this from Barbara. Well, the people who don't know Barbara don't care. But but it, your job is to get people to know Barbara, not to buy these things. Ah, this is gonna disappear on me. Uh, not a commodity, yes. Years ago, uh, when I did shows on Long Island, many people would criticize and say, well, there's imperfections here and there at Claire's. I can get such and such. Yeah, good. Let's go to Claire's. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, good for you, Barbara. Uh, some didn't understand it's a form of art, one of a kind. I'm not a factory. Exactly. There's flaws in it. Of course, there are flaws in it. It was made by human hands, not a machine. It wasn't made in China. It was made down the block wherever you live uh some actually compared it to factory made necklaces right this isn't me and if they don't want art my pieces aren't for you go to claire's go to claire's seriously right good for you barbara that's our new catchphrase Just, it, 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 go to claire's I, I don't think there's anyone named Claire in this group. I won't let anyone named claire in the group from now on new rule that's just it when we don't like something we go to claire's Man, I hope there's not someone watching this named Claire. I'm going to feel silly. Uh, Rupert, uh, laughing. Okay, cool. Uh, smiling. Uh, oh, the opals. They are beautiful, Richard. Was it the tattoo machine or the opals? I don't know what you were selling. Uh, Rupert, they can paint different to you. Different to you. Yes, right. I, I was talking about your paintings. Uh, yes, people can paint. Uh, everybody's painting is different. And it doesn't mean that yours are better than everybody else's. It just means that yours are unique. Unique literally means one of a kind. It's the only one in the world. You yourself can't even reproduce the one of a kind thing you already made. I could paint the same picture over and over and over again 10 times. I'd have 10 unique pictures. They'd be the same scene. Maybe I use the same paint. I use the same technique. But... By the time I got to the 10th one, I learned new techniques. I figured this out. It was raining and I felt different. You know what I mean? It's, they're all different. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm addicted to them. 
I don't know. Uh, one of my favorite portraits is a quick one minute pen sketch one of my friends did on a post-it note. Have you ever seen Alex Vandermeer's work in this po in this group? It, 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 his work is amazing. And he'll like, he'll be like, I could just see this guy like walking down the street and seeing a piece of chalk on the ground and a chalkboard and just being like, and then walking away. And it's like this amazing thing that he just made. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's beautiful. I hope you're watching, uh, but I like it, and 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 his stuff is really really cool. He'll just do stuff like it's interesting to me because for me it's like I have to create something that is like this epic thingamajig, right? And it's like I need a brand new uh, everything I do is digital, so I need like a Photoshop file and this and that. And meanwhile, he's he's posting things that are like not even a, like a spiral notebook, but like a piece of the corner of a page that he used five years ago is blank. So he's drawing something on that. He's like, hey, check out what I made. That's great. It's awesome. How much is that worth? Is that worth more or less than, than something somebody painted on a 20 foot by 40 foot canvas with oil paint that took them 10 years? You know how you know? Because uh, the person who painted that or Alex has created uh, a story around themselves, has created a mystique, a following. Uh, and, and then the people who are into his thing, they're going to pay for that. And they, I don't want that thing. I might, it won't even fit in my house. Robin. Yes. Let's just leave it at that. She agrees with me. Right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. Robin, I imagine that you are right. You imagine that I'm right? Well, no, I'm right. We don't, there's no imagining that I'm right uh, about art being unique. And I remember me paying $30 for a weird type of abstract that was some kind of thing I'd never seen before. I had no idea how it could be created. So even when I couldn't really afford it at the time, I bought it just because it was so unique and I really loved it. Right? Don't we do that? I mean, sure, there are things that we need that are commodities and things that we like that are commodities. Um, but, but there are also things that we get that are unique. And the reason we like unique things is because they make us feel special. The buyer, the person, the receiver of it feels special. Like, look at this thing I have. You don't have one, and I know you don't because this is the only one. thousand dollars for a portrait of Bobby Donahue holy crap there you go Kelly, Kelly, Kelly says in my medium of art everyone prices their services very differently I feel like there's a huge range in the pricing and I can't believe how much some people charge actually I find myself basing it mostly on what I would be willing to pay for what I have to offer very good. Um, this is similar to what I was saying before in terms of, uh, you know, like I can't afford myself. In this case, you're, what you're saying is that, uh, is, is so are, are you talking about the specific business that, that you're building the uh, with with, uh, with readings and stuff? Because um, there that can also be seen as a commodity. However, there are people who do what you do that have built a following that can charge a lot more. And people are like, you know, if, if people don't know you per se, and they're like, well, I need a reading or I need a, a, an hour session with you, or I need uh, you to read my chart or whatever the things are, right? Um, in those cases, then when you're unknown to them and they're just Googling who does this stuff, then you're a dime a dozen. Everything is by price. It's like, oh, well, this one does it for 60 bucks and this one does it for 100 bucks. And I'm reading the services description and they seem to be pretty similar. So I would, why pay $40 more, right? However, if you are creating this story around yourself that I'm Kelly and this is me and look at this and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and then people are buying into you. You're not buying into me with money. You're buying into me emotionally. You're showing up in the group every day because you like the group. And there are people who don't show up in the group every day because they joined and they forgot. And that's okay. Or they joined and they see it once in a while. Or they just like to post their stuff and take off. Or they just like to read things once a week. And all of that's fine because their energy is still being, being consumed in here for us. But for the some of us who are here all the time, 
myself included, you're buying into the energy that I'm creating emotionally. And so you guys can all do that too. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You don't have to start a Facebook group or do daily lives. You could do anything. But if you can create anything that 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 builds a, a, a story around you and a community of people that are buying into you emotionally, then when you say, by the way, I do these things, I do this service, I have this thing for sale, they're not going to compare you to that one and say, well, you charge 50, but they charge 45 and the price list seems to have the same things. No, they're gonna be like, I want the one from you. I don't even know that guy. That's the thing. They want it from you because they've emotionally bought into you. And now it's like the money becomes secondary. Unless they're broke, then, then it doesn't matter. They don't have any money. Mac, with some sparkles. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm sure you wrote that at a point when I said something and you wrote the comment. And if we had read the comment in that moment, it would have made perfect sense. But clearly, some time has passed since the writing of that comment and the hence reading of that comment. And I have no clue what it means. So that's fun. I like when that happens. Keep doing that to me. Uh, Richard says, people buy people before they buy products and services. Yeah, that's it, man. They buy, they're buying you. They're buying you. You got to do stuff to get them to buy you. And they will buy, They first they have to buy you emotionally. Then they are pull the money out. They will. Barbara says, dude, you should follow me around. I'll just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Richard, I'm talking to. I'll just talk and talk and talk. And then I'll walk out. And you'll just be like, blah, 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 blah. And like sum it up for me, like perfectly. It's it's great. We, we, we could be like a, to a comedy team. <laughs> Barbara, I'm selling a piece of my soul, my energy. Right, that's it. Uh, this is Princess. Uh, sorry. <laughs> this, is, this is priceless, actually. Uh, but I have to change something. Why? I can't. Sorry, I got to start this over. I can't read. Uh, I don't know what the heck's wrong with me here. Barbara says, I am selling a piece of my soul, my energy. That's priceless, actually. But I have to charge something to be... Okay. <laughs> I, I, I have it set to disappear after 45 seconds so that it doesn't just stay on the screen uh, but and, and then I was like oh I should turn that off but now I leave it like that because I find it so funny um, but I have to charge something to be able to date the love I have with others and hope to aid in healing with stones to date uh uh, is that the right word? Am I reading? I have to charge something. All right. It, she's creating something from her heart, from her soul. It's priceless. It's her own energy, but it, it, it's a business. I got to charge something, right? So really, uh, what is priceless? It, it's it's all the money in the world. You know, I, I need I need the, the GDP of Estonia. Give me that for it. No, it, it doesn't work that way. But still, it's got to be some kind of thing uh, because it, it becomes, in that case, what is it worth to the person who will buy it? That's why you have to sell yourself, you know? Nobody's going to care that you put your soul into it, your energy, because so did that guy over there with his $5 trinkets. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, and, I, and I'm sorry to say the word trinket like that. I don't mean it to, to belittle anybody's art, but I'm just saying that when you have people who are just looking at everybody's tables and booths as commodities, that's what they see. They just see that. So if you can create the Barbara-ness of it, you have to sell your you-ness. Y-O-U, your you-ness. <sighs> That takes time. It takes time. It takes persistence and energy. So, uh, so, so, just keep doing it. Uh, Donna says, "Yes, I did know you before. You rock star. You oh, you rock star. You." <laughs> there was a there was a carriage break. Uh, cool. Thank you, Donna. Yes, you did know me before. Um, Kelly, fuel blue sneaker line coming out. You know, it's funny that you say that. No, not specifically a sneaker line, but I have always, always, always had this idea to have a like line of cool clothes. I just always have had that idea. Um, it's it's always been like the second or third round thing that I want to do for the thing that I'm building, and uh, and so the answer to that is yes. Why not uh, fuel blue uh, or something sneaker? 
sneakers uh, and shirts and it would it would be like my style you know what i mean um yeah definitely absolutely yes Barbara, uh, not date the love, share the love. Ha <laughs> ha. Talking into you talk talk to texting, right? Got it. Um, uh, that's what I'm doing. Sell online. Tell my followers where I'll be. Excellent, right? Because then your followers show up. They already know the Barbara-ness. They already know to go right to your table and not look at that one's table. And they don't see them as trinkets, right? I hope that that word didn't insult you. I didn't mean it as an insult. Uh, I have someone coming up from New Jersey on Saturday to see me. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Position yourself correctly. Yeah, that's it. It, it takes work. It takes work. Kelly, create, believe in, and embody your own brand. And the people that value you will flock to it and pay what you want. That's what I hear today. That's 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 it. Richard, where were you, man, with that one? I, I needed you, buddy. And Kelly Kelly swooped in and did the summation. Good for you, Kelly. Yeah, that's it, man. It starts with you. You have to believe in yourself. And believe in yourself at the level that you will meet yourself where you are. You know, you don't be hard on yourself that you're here and you should be here. If you're not here, don't go there because you won't believe it. And, and you'll flop initially. You can get there eventually, and it, it doesn't matter if you're not there yet. Start where you are and believe it, and then nudge yourself further and further and further to believing it and believing it. Because I'm telling you, once you start to get that thing where it's like this person is into you personally, and so is this person, and now you're doing the farmer's market, but this person's driving from New Jersey to come and see me, that didn't happen last time, but I've done some things, and now it's happening, and these people who know me on social media are coming in their cars driving across whatever to see me that's pretty amazing you know so uh the the more you do it and the more that that happens the more you start to believe in yourself and you nudge it up and nudge it up and nudge it up and nudge it up facebook user so true so true i don't know who this is sorry uh well there's a few from here i'd like to know who it is so let me see uh well, no that's not it uh, no, no wow there's still a lot to come uh jason is this all jason yeah jason jason brownlee hey buddy how you doing uh yes so true jason there's a link to ecamm in this post uh, if you get a chance either at the top or over to your side or depending on what you're looking at this on anyway it just says uh click that link give ecamm permission because all i see is facebook user um, but I'm glad you agree with me. Thank you. So uh, Jason says, I don't mean to be judgmental of people, but a price they are accordingly to the person and how I feel about them. Yeah, that's it. You know, if you don't know an artist and they're like, oh, my my thing is $10,000 and you're just like, why would I pay that? The reason you're saying, why would I pay that is because you have not bought into them emotionally yet. You have no connection to them. You don't understand. Do you know that they put their heart and soul into it? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, it, but it doesn't matter because so did every other artist. So who cares at that point? But if you learn their story and got into their brand and became part of their community and really got into it, and now you're just like, wow, I really want to own one of those paintings and display it in my home because that will show me that I'm this. That's why people do it. Alyssa is here, hi. Hey, doing? I'm listing my gemstone bracelets tonight and messaging the people that are interested finally came up with a price that I feel good about. That's really what it is. Before anybody else will buy into you, you have to buy into you. And if you are doing it at a place that's not authentic, then uh, that will come across and people will, will, will feel it. You know, even if they can't put their finger on it and be like, that's a hundred dollars inauthentic. No, they're not going to say that. They're just going to be like, mm, I don't know, you know, and they're not going to really feel it. But if you feel it, then now you can exude that energy and you will attract the people with the proper energy who will also feel it and will buy into you personally. Be like, I really like you. I like your story. I like what, I like the things you're going through. I like you're such an inspiration. Um, and uh, and and I want to uh, I want to be a part of your world, and that's why they'll buy your art and not somebody else's art. Glad I made up my mind," she said. "The arc, the art 
I don't know what you're trying to say, but uh, sorry. Uh, you were probably replying to something in the moment, but now so much time has passed that I have no idea. Brandy says, I feel like I neglect. By the way, it's funny because I was uh, that, that, that has become a thing on Daily Fuel. Some of you are new to Daily Fuel, so it's become a thing where so much time passes from when you comment to when I read it that I don't understand the context. And one day I mentioned something about that. And a bunch of these clowns decided to start writing things completely out of context. Like I was racking my brains to try to figure out what does this comment mean? And it was just, they just completely made it up. <laughs> and I don't know how they all knew to do it because how were they, were they messaging each other on Messenger? I don't know, but a bunch of them did it. And, uh, but they didn't do it in the comments because I would have seen, you know, but uh, it was funny. Brandy says, I feel like I neglected that aspect of myself it is really my concern for not sticking with it. I could have been so much further along, but I suppose I'm right where I'm supposed to be. That, that's really the place you have to start is I'm where I am supposed to be. Uh, maybe you could have been further along. I don't even know what that means in terms of this thing, but it's not like you just, you know, got in a closet and turned yourself off and went to sleep for 20 years. You, you did stuff. You had life experience. Maybe now you can create art based on that life experience that you could have never created without having experienced it. And you would have never experienced it if you were just working on writing poems. This is what, have you ever heard of like, uh, is Mikey here today? He would, he would know about this. Uh, a lot of times in, uh, in, in music, a band will come out and their first album is just astounding. Stellar. I mean, unbelievable music, absolutely creative, genius stuff, song to song, beginning to end, right? It's because they took all the emotion and all of the stress of trying to come up in this business and trying to be something and, and put it into this album. And now it's like, bam, they break through and it's like, wow. And now they're in the record company's like, cool, go make another one. And they got nothing to talk about. They don't know anything else. You know, it's like, and after a while, uh, as this this happened a lot in the uh, in the like with '80s hair bands. They were ridiculous about it. Al entire albums about the tour bus and being on the road, and that was all they knew how to talk about anymore because they already they had no other experiences. They just spent their whole life doing that. And now they didn't know anything else. You know, I'm drinking and I'm on the tour bus, and there's a girl I don't know passed out and blah. You know, and and that's it. That's that was the '80s music. So Brandy, don't worry about it. Don't don't be hard on yourself that you're not further along. Maybe all you've been doing is gathering all the inspiration and it's like, I got it. Now I can go make my stuff. Think of it that way. So Robin says, Jesus, Robin, really? <laughs> you, you, can, you can hit return and break it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay this is gonna this is gonna be a giggle fest it's gonna disappear i hadn't really priced my paintings mostly because i can't really see myself parting with them unless i would be highly valued by the purchaser i understand that and how would i know that i had no clue but if they're priced at a pretty high price and somebody wanted to pay that i can imagine that it would mean that they valued it that much. Okay, like one time. <laughs> See, this is a perfect point to hit return and then write another comment. Okay, like this one time uh, at Bandcamp. One of my only sales occurred when I priced a work I didn't really want to sell because I loved it so much. I priced a six by four inch abstract in an eight by 10 frame at $150 because I had to in order to enter the juried exhibition thinking it would never sell at that price and I would get it back after the exhibition ended, but guess what? It sold, right? Okay, for 150 bucks. So someone must have valued it that much. And by the way, that particular work also had won an honorable mention as well. Oh, good for you. Uh, so I was really lucky even to get a picture of it taken by my friend because I was so sure I would get the work back. Otherwise, I would not even have a photo of that work. Well, isn't that amazing, right? Look at that. Oh, that was good timing. You see that? I didn't do that. That just happened. And, uh, and here's another. Barbara, okay, I agree. Uh, well, Bobby, I put things in quotes because, yes, you are that smart. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and Barbara says, I missed everything. Ugh. Chaos. What do you mean you missed everything? I don't know what that... What, what did you walk away? Anyway, uh, watch it back. Um, 
Except when I said trinkets. I didn't mean to say that. Uh, Richard says, when I started tattooing, I charged 20 pounds. In, is that pounds? Uh, per hour. Uh, 14 years later. I, we're, we're from the United States. We don't know anything outside the United States. You, you, you just put the dollar signs. You're screwing me up. I don't know. I don't know your 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 money. I don't know your your towns. I don't know your geography. I don't. We. It's not just me. It's all of us. We're we're very United Statesian here, and that's it's like it's a, it's our own little world that we live in. And uh, I don't know your metric system. Right? Well, I do actually because I went to engineering school. But anyway, uh, anyway, I, I charge twenty pounds an hour. Fourteen years later, I charge two hundred pounds per hour, and I'm booked solid. Why? Because your tattoos are are better? Well, probably, yeah, your tattoos are really great. But even so, there are other people who are good, right? But you're Richard. People know you. You've created a mystique and an aura and a story around you. You're the guy who made your own tattoo things. I told you, tell me what they're called. Uh, anyway, uh, I have artists that work for me from 50 to 100 pounds an hour. Always have entry-level price points, mid-range, and premium. There you go, man. But to get you, I don't want that guy. I want you. Well, that's the premium, right? There you go. That's the premium premium because you're you. And you've created that. And you've you've earned that. You, you, you created it in your mind. And then you did the legwork to get other people who can feel that energy and would believe it to agree with you. Yes, I agree with you, right? And then you earn it. That's it. I watched one of his videos of him doing sketches of trees. I liked that. You're talking about Alex. Yeah. Uh, his, his, I, I said to him one day, dude, I'd love to see the work in progress of your video. By the way, anyone watching this, that's a really cool thing to do if you wanted to do it. A lot of you are posting your art, but a lot of times I wonder, like, how did they do that? Uh, you're all welcome to make videos of yourself, like, making your art. You can do it and talk. You can do a time lapse or anything like that and post those videos. Um, but upload them. Don't put them on YouTube and share the link. I'll delete it. And I will go, no, no, don't do that. Um, Robin says, oh, wow. Well, this, one, this one's never ending. Wow. You are explaining how even if you made a same painting over and over again, it wouldn't be the same. I get it. Yes. Like the earlier oils on paper took so much time and so much tiny brush strokes. I doubt if I would ever be doing that kind of stuff again. Exactly. I don't do things the same way again. I don't do anything the same way again because I learn more I, I, and I incorporate new ideas. And, and my, pers my person changes. I, I have a new outlook on things over time. You can't, you can't, you're, you yourself are never the same person. You yourself are a unique version of yourself that has never existed before and will never exist again. You'll be part of future versions, but the future version of you will be a bigger, grander version. Not bigger, but you know what I mean, right? Ray, no two snowflakes, no two thumbprints, no two people's faces, no two rocks, nor grains of sand. No two empty spaces, no two flowers carved in wood, although they've tried their hardest, will never ever be the same. Damn, the imperfection of an artist, right? We call it imperfections, but really it's the beauty of it because if we were perfect, then everybody would be identical and that would be boring. Barbara, I'm having a very off energy day. I think I, it rubbed off on Bobby when he read my last post. <laughs> oh, dear Bob, Booby has lost the plot. Yeah, I, I was going off the rails for a moment there, right? I, hopefully I'm back. Kelly, wow, Kelly, what a great idea. If anybody wants, I can just for fun create a mock-up of what they would look like. I don't remember what Kelly said. See, I, I don't, here's the thing about me doing these things. These things are like stream of consciousness for me. So like literally five minutes later, I don't even remember what the hell I said. Um, thank you for today, Bobby. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, love it. You're right. I'll just take that one. Thank you. Uh, Melinda, LOL. Haha, <laughs> I was funny. Barbara, it kept cutting out. Oh, that stinks. <sighs> that stinks. Uh, pounds are more than dollars. Yeah. What's up? Ah, I was just talking about you. Did you hear me talking about you? I was talking about what a great artist you are. Um, go back and watch it uh, if you can. You don't have to, but you should because it's about you. Uh, Barbara, not doing your art the same way each time. I find this with my pieces. See, see, 
she put a little context there. Now I know what we're talking about here. If she just started with, I find this with my pieces, I have no idea what she was talking about. So thank you, Barbara. Thanks. I find this with my pieces, more intricate ones. I have trouble replicating, so I tend to tell everyone it's either a one of a kind or to be prepared for no two pieces being alike. Yeah, that's it. Great. Our imperfections are perfect. Yes. Sneakers? Sneakers? Uh, Brandy says, thank you. Are you asking me about the making sneakers or why was I talking about sneakers? Uh, I don't know. Brandy, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for being here. The mock-up comment to Kelly was about fuel blue sneakers. Ah, ah, okay. It would be fun to play with some design ideas. Cool. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying now. Um, Alex, I'll watch the replay. I caught Rupert's comment about watching a video. That's about it. Yeah, I was talking about you before that comment. He he was commenting on what I was saying about you and your art and the way that you do things because uh, I find you extremely unique. Uh, the... the it's it's weird. It's like I, I it. How do you how do you specify when somebody's really really uniqueer than right? Because there's no that's unique. It's binary. Every you're just unique, but you're extremely unique. <laughs> Maybe you're um, I, I don't know what the word is, but you're cool. Uh, yes, sneakers. I don't. What, what what about sneakers? I'm making sneakers. I don't. I've lost the context of them. I know we were talking about sneakers. Kelly asked me. Oh, are you asking like why are we talking about sneakers? Kelly asked me because I was talking about why somebody would pay so much money for uh, a particular brand like Air Jordans back in the day when people would pay so much money. And I, I know Nike makes all kinds of cool ones now compared to like a lame pair of New Balance or something that you get for 40 bucks. Why? You know, are they made so much better? Was it a work of art hand stitched by a master craftsman? Probably not. They're factory made. But they're buying the brand. They're buying the mystique. They're buying the story. And then uh, Kelly asked me if there would be a Fuel Blue sneaker line one day. And I said, yes. You rock. By the way, Brandy, uh, I want to tell you something. You posted the other day. This is just a little conversation between me and Brandy. The You guys can leave and come back in a minute. You posted the other day on my welcome video that you were looking for a group like this and you were very happy that you finally found it. And I wanted to say a thank you for that comment. But I also wanted to tell you something that you don't know. That day, I was meditating and I was doing my energy work that I do. And um, one of the things that I try to do in my energy work, I don't always remember to do it, but it had come up recently and I've started doing it again, is to ask Source for a sign that what I'm doing is working. I said, give me a sign that something is working, right? And I saw that post of yours, that comment of yours, and I clicked over to your profile to see who is this amazing, smart person that I need to know. And uh, and I clicked over on your profile and I saw your your cover image is a picture of you in your driveway with a with a blue Camaro. And that blue Camaro is like my dream car. That's the car that I want. And I saw that. I was like, this person joined the group, write the comment. I click on a profile. I see the car that I want. And I'm like, well, if that's not my sign for today, I don't know what is. So thank you. See, it works both ways the universe is pretty freaking awesome and with that we are finished that's the last comment so every day the last comment er gets the booby prize and it was brandy a second ago but alex had to swoop in and ruin that for you sorry i love those answers from spirit yeah me too me too so alex has the booby prize now but i'm gonna say thank you to everybody so guys thank you very much for hanging out with me today today is what thursday yes yeah, so we still got a couple more this week and uh i'll see you tomorrow and uh all right if nobody else is gonna say Anything, then Alex gets the booby prize. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye.